All right, architecture uh, of Nigeria was historically influenced by environmental condi conditions as well as social and cultural factors. The coming of missionaries and political changes brought about by colonialism precipitated a change in architectural style and utility of buildings. Now, Tosin Oshinao is a registered, she's registered in the Federal Republic of Nigeria and also a member of the Royal Institute of British Architects. Her interests are in architectural history and socially responsible approaches in architectural design and urbanism. Now, we start from there. <laughs> Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa One with the hashtag Waze or send us SMS or WhatsApp at 081-8038-4663. Thank you so much for joining us. By the way, you're looking so amazing. Thank you. Thank you for hey. having me here. Uti was just saying that, oh, you're 29. <laughs> and some you. people don't know. <laughs> No, yes. say Tell us how you how you look this good first. What's the architecture behind this this I'm look? I'm telling you, it's architecture. It's a real build. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, this is the work of art. It's good. It's good. Ah, <laughs> don't deceive people, Tosio. It's hard work. Hard work. Decent diet. You know, um, good lifestyle in general. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us. It's all um, over you. Yeah, it's all over you. Tell us about this business of architecture in Nigeria. You know. Um, what do you see when you when you look at Nigeria compared to when you first moved into the country? Because you 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 lived abroad, you yes. worked abroad for a while, and you know I, I remember your first design that you did. You know you came on our show then and all of that. What <laughs> yeah. do you think is the the biggest challenge that you've seen in the architectural space in Nigeria? I think um, the biggest challenge, first of all, is the strength of our economy. Um, the the type of architecture you see in New York you see 60, 80 story buildings, it's because they have a strong economy. If you look at our GDP compared to somewhere like the US, you, you know, the first industry that shows the strength of a country's economy is its building industry. We build small scale in this environment. I mean, the tallest building is probably 30 stories, 32 in Marina, which was built in the 60s, 70s. And you look at what we're producing today, the only area that will have a decent scale of building is Equa Atlantic. And the reality is even um, the professionals with the technology or understanding of building on that scale doesn't even exist in this environment because we don't build like that. So um, if you look at the third world in general, we still use simplistic concrete and sandcrete blocks. Whereas if you look at the West, they're building in steel. Steel is a much more expensive material to building. It's very quick. You have a lot more flexibility in what you can do. But when you have economies that are of much smaller scale, the reality is we build in much more simple and cheaper materials. So how does government policies impact um, the practice of, um, of um, architecture in Nigeria? I think uh, government policy has to impact. It doesn't, it's not enforced. So for example, one of the biggest problems we have today are um, uh, people not adhering to planning uh, restrictions, or regulations within certain areas, and also particularly building control. Um, and where we have a lot of situations today where you have buildings that are collapsing, it's because the policies that are in place by government are not being enforced. The policies are there. There are building control officers who go to sites. But in many situations where it's easy to get away with not actually doing things properly or greasing a hand or someone turning a blind eye, these things have long-term implications. Usually it's the professionals who always get blamed. Oh, there was a bad architect, a bad structural engineer. But in many cases, it's because the builder is actually not following the drawings or the specifications that have been, that have Absolutely. been designed. You know, somebody says, oh, why am I putting in so much reinforcement? I can do it cheaper. I know the last project I did, there was no problem. But how do you know next time? We all die once. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, you just need one bad mistake, you know, and, and the implication is life. Absolutely. Wow. So I was just going to say that uh, having studied abroad and working in this sort of industry that's very male dominated, and you've already said there are a lot of challenges, uh, it's small scale. So if you've worked in large scale, what motivated you to come back here and really, I think, take Nigeria by the horns? <sighs> Well, I have a Nigerian passport, so hey. <laughs> <laughs> there were not many options for Plan B. I was very fortunate to get to work before I came, and I was lucky to get a work permit, which a lot of people don't get. Yeah. But the reality is, if we all don't come back and, and put in our own two couple 
contribution to our economy, then what is the point in having the privilege of having been able to go away? You know, um, to be honest, what I have achieved in Nigeria, I could never have achieved it if I had stayed in Europe. They already have a very well-established system. Um, I would have been one of many architects working on maybe one of many big projects. Absolutely. Whereas in this environment, I actually get the opportunity to change history Absolutely. <laughs> and be part of you know something much bigger than myself and be remembered for it as well, which I think is important. Awesome. I'm happy you're talking oh, about changing history. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just what going to say history? that, uh -huh. I mean, it's a fantastic... You're awesome. You're, you know, when I read your resume, when I read about you, you've achieved a lot. And a lot of people fall into the same category as you. They had the same opportunities, that same education. They came back. Say, they came back to Nigeria. So there must be something unique about, about you. you. Yeah. And that's what I want to know. <laughs> what yep. makes you Tosi? Mm, I just think I'm very hardworking. But I think also the reality is that with design, design is. It's something that comes from within your mind. There are the reality is there are constraints in this environment, but sometimes within the confines of a tiny box, you can actually create something that you probably would never have thought of if it was too easy to achieve. And I think that's a beautiful thing about working in Nigeria. People, you know, within the limitations of the building materials that I've said, we've been able to create in my office architecture and designs that people remember and people take notice, you know. It's the same limitations. Yeah. as everybody else here. But we're going the extra mile to try and solve spatial problems oh. within the confines of our so environment. So you're actually thinking outside the box. Yes, so, yes. So tell Very me, consciously. we have a big challenge in Nigeria. Housing is a big challenge in Nigeria and we are yet to get real solutions. And you know when you were talking it just reminded me that if we truly wanted to solve this problem, in all honesty, we should be thinking building I don't know, maybe 100 story buildings and all of that and mm. create cheaper options. Do you think there's a possibility for us to have cheaper housing options, especially when it comes to building with steel, when we don't have the raw materials? They are trying to resurrect uh, Ajakuta steel. <laughs> this is making me sad. They're trying about to resurrect that. the Ajakuta steel company. Let's believe them like that they will do it. They're trying to resurrect. They are trying. They're actually they're trying. trying. To do that. You know how many times you know, tried? But, yes, you know, they're they're trying. trying. But we know that for us to have good housing, you know, like you yes. rightly mentioned, still has to be incorporated so it lasts long. You go to you go to France, for instance. You see a building that has been one is one thousand years old and it's still standing very strong and it's mm. doing well and they're able to house a lot of people. We have a big and problem. Still so how do we solve this problem? What is uh, I mean, uh, where uh, do you uh, think the government can come in? And there are many things. I mean. I, Let's be careful not to say still is the solution because still needs maintenance, and that's another True. problem we have. We have a maintenance issue. Yeah, issue. let's not talk that. Lack of maintenance culture in general. But I do think that there needs to be, we need to find cheaper and faster ways of building in okay. particular. And also the reality that we need to realize we need to live in smaller and smaller spaces, which is what they have done in Asia. In Nigeria, people still want to build the house in the village. Like, yes. All this space. So, you know, the reality is if you live in Lagos, you should, if you're a young family, you should be thinking a two-bedroom apartment. Let's just be realistic, you know. People have rooms, and another issue we have here, everybody wants an ensuite. Why? In Europe, they don't all have an ensuite in their house. Why do we all have ensuites? Privacy. <laughs> no, 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 but it's no. privacy. privacy. We no. can't afford it. No, but, but it we, costs so, money, and we don't okay. make toilets in Nigeria. We don't make sinks. We, impo we, we import, import them, everything. yes. Mm -hmm. These things are all expensive. Until we start to have industries in Nigeria that actually produce these things locally, mm -hmm. building will but, always but be But Tosi, you know that this thing you just mentioned is deeper. It's a cultural problem. <laughs> if you're driving a B2, they'd call you a popper. But if you, I mean, I went somewhere with my That's friend. True. We drove in a in a leg. The man even asked questions. He just opened the <laughs> gate. Opened the That's gate. the thing. And you know, it's it's a cultural problem but that is deeper. Problem. So how do we even solve that problem? Because what you're saying makes absolute sense. I believe that I don't need more than a three bedroom apartment because now my children are in a boarding house. Two of the rooms, dust is, is everywhere. But people still believe that I have I must own a mansion that shows that yeah. yes I'm wealthy nice and all status. of that. Yes. That's the stage into so how do we ah, that that one passed my power. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a much but it is something that we really need to be realistic about. You know, where the cross ventilation go? Why does everybody mm. have to have an AC? Can you mm. afford an AC? If you can't afford it, you don't need it. Mm. You have a window here, a window here, it, the air will pass, you know. Yeah. You have so many places in Lagos Island where everybody is sticking an AC in. You're walking on the streets, it's so hot. So hot. Yeah. Exactly. You know, there's so many things that are culturally wrong. Mm. We had terrazzo once upon a time. Where has terrazzo gone? Oh. Everybody wants to tell. Mm. Why? Hmm. 
you know, status. that is a flaw that lasts a good 50 years. If you have a terrazzo flaw and you polish it regularly, it doesn't have issues. There are so many things we, we have we have embraced so much and forgotten the reason why tropical architecture that came in in the 50s and 60s, the reason why it works. We don't do it anymore. There's so This is a much, much, much bigger problem. But I think the, the, the thing I can contribute to this is the reality that we need to be realistic and understand that we need to live in smaller and smaller spaces. The demographic okay. of the family is changing as well. Absolutely. You know, okay. People are marrying later. You and know, they are okay. also having um, less um, children. Yes. Yes. Less children. Less children. Okay. Now, in, in, <laughs> in 2018, you were, you, were, you were stated to be the, the rug. You're in a woman's, you're, you're the only woman in a man's world. Okay. It was stated in The Guardian that you are the damsel in yes. a man's world. Okay. So how has it been working as in that rugged terrain? Mm. You know what's funny? When I, when I saw that article, I'll be honest. I was a little annoyed. What do you mean a damsel? Like a damsel in distress? Like, <laughs> like I can't help myself. Exactly. I mean, I'll be honest, it is a bit tough. Um, but I think it's getting easier. I think once people see that you are competent, more and more, less gender matters. But I mean, it's. I still feel it. You go to a meeting and you're the only woman in the meeting. Somebody, oh, you and go you're not smallish again to what's in the matter. <laughs> You've gone to side. Somebody will say, ah. Ah, hold the ladder for how? I said, did I tell you my leg is paining me? What's wrong with you? I can climb the ladder, and I'm going up to inspect the work that is there. You know, you're working for me. I don't need you to feel you need to help me. I mean, some people do it out of just genuine consent, but to be honest, in the work environment, we've all come with our competence in our brains, and we should be taking on that value. And I think sometimes when you check people, then they, they realize that, okay, you're not going to be considered in that capacity. And that's why I always tell women going to sites, please do not wear skirts. Okay. If you wear a skirt, they will not take you seriously. You have to dress like one of the boys. If you dress like one of the boys, you will get things done. You know, Absolutely. you have to be very, you have to man up on site okay. in particular. And even in meetings, you need to understand as a woman not to be emotional in your interaction with mm -hmm. men. Men are very unemotional. They're very practical. Even when they fight, they'll go and drink beer afterwards. Oh, Women yeah. don't do that, you know. No. So, <laughs> I won't talk to you for the next so one year. Back, so so coming back like to Nigeria, to... Coming, coming back to Nigeria, the, your experience in the Europe and yes. before coming back here, what have you? What are the challenges you've encountered doing business in, as an architect in Nigeria space? Uh, generally, business in Nigeria is difficult for service. We struggle to understand paying for service in Nigeria. People will say, why am I paying you for drawings? I understand the builder because he's giving me the finished product. But people don't understand the importance of service. And to be honest, what I have learned is to hold those clients who understand and appreciate what you do close. Mm. And try and move within their network. Um, and hopefully, people start to understand that even though it's a service, you are technically the beginning of the final end product. And Absolutely. if people see the value of that end product, they're more willing to pay for your service. But that's a big problem we have in Nigeria. People don't understand how to pay for service. Okay. Um, intellectual property, it's a real challenge. Yeah. People don't appreciate it. I was just going to ask, uh, if you were to visualize yourself in, for instance, a special advisor role, We've talked about low-income housing, and I know that in other parts of the world they're doing a lot with fabricate, prefabricated homes. Yes. And you know, what would be your input into how Nigeria can start to claw back this issue of housing? What can we really do? I think we just need we need to be innovative. We need to look at examples of of solutions that have worked elsewhere, but also start to look at realistically how they can be implemented in our core environment. Um, the, the thing about any form of business or any example of any product or any service that's been done elsewhere is it might be great in that environment, but we have to be realistic. Will it work here? Culturally, will we adapt to it? Is it something that we can take on? I do think that our solutions are with us. We just haven't found them. But I think by looking at precedents of what's been done elsewhere, it might help us to, 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 to find realistic solutions. A good example is the roundabouts in Lekki. When they were put in, I think they were done by some South Africans, it, it made sense. But Nigerians don't even go to driving school. If you don't understand the importance of Absolutely. driving on the roundabout, it can never work, work in this environment. Absolutely. And that's why they're... But it's not all Nigerians. I think it's Lagosians. <laughs> Honestly, because... No, in all honesty, if you still... If you go to the north, I must give it to them. If Because I grew up, I was born and bred in Kaduna State. If you go to Kaduna State today, 
you are approaching the roundabout. You would wait for the person that is on the... I mean, it doesn't make... When I'm in Lagos, I'm like, my head yeah, is going I crazy. was just going to say to you that it's a patience problem. Yeah, We're it's, just, it's patience. So I think like, it's, it's a Lagos thing. It's not really Nigerian. I played it but there, I wanted to advocate <laughs> there. It's because they are not in a hurry in Kaduna. No, it's not about <laughs> not in a hurry. They understand the rules of driving. You know, it's not about not Well, maybe, in a hurry. maybe they've also had people there who learned how to drive properly, who keep passing it. Yes, down. that is what we were saying. You know, Lagos, I can just teach her how to drive and she enters exactly. the road and nobody's checking and, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't make any sense. But tell us, if you, if we were to find, if we are trying to find, you know, solutions, you know, because, um, was it yesterday? We reviewed something that China, because of the, the coronavirus, coronavirus that is coming up, yes. imagine they are building a 1,000 bed capacity in hospital in, in 10 days. In days, yes. Uh, yes. Is that Amazing. In Never. Is that First possible? of all, is it bureaucracy? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it depends on what material they're using, but again, they do have steel. So, yeah. yes, it's like toothpicks. They will just stack, 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 stack yeah. clap wow. the walls in. So, it is very possible. In Nigeria, we're building concrete. Concrete has to cure for 21 days. You Absolutely. can't do anything on it yeah. while Until you're waiting for done. it to set. So, yeah. you know. so, if we were to Ooh, find yeah. a solution right now, because we have a lot of, um, for instance, we have a lot of shanties. Recently, mm -hmm. the um, the government, um, uh, uh, is it Taqwa Ta 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 Bay? Mm -hmm. yes, when, yeah, yeah, and all of those, when they they uh, evacuated the, the people from Taqwa Bay and all of that, I still believe that there should be a better management system, you know, to move these people because it's a community. Mm -hmm. It's not just one individual that you're displacing, it's a community. What would you think, you know, thinking from a, the mind of an architect? How would they solve these kinds of problems? You know, if they truly want to clean up Lagos, for instance, they want to take off all, take off all the shanties and all of that. What kind of structures should they? Well, we need to be careful. Maybe sometimes it's not actually removing the shanties. Maybe it's actually formalizing the structure. You look at somewhere like Brazil and you see the favelas, you know, that they have there. They were also built on hillsides with no real access roads. But their state has actually formalized the system. They provide them with water. They've also got. Um, cable trays now that transport people mm -hmm. from one end to the other because they've realized that, look, they're here to stay. You cannot always just be the solution to just demolish and move. Mm -hmm. You move them. The people at Jack on it that were moved from Morocco, they're saying they want to move them again. Yeah. You know, it, sometimes it's, it's maybe it's like trying to find a way to accommodate them realistically, formalize a structure so that you can control the things within those communities that are not working well instead of just this process of constantly oh. displacing. Mm. Um, a lot of people are saying containers might be the solution. Mm, I'm plus and minus on it. I think it might be a solution in terms of a transition space to more formal structural housing later. But um, it is a big problem that we have. And it's, it's only by thinking innovatively and doing small tests um, sites and examples that we can really come up with realistic solutions. Okay. So if you had one big challenge in architecture in Nigeria, the business of architecture, especially dealing with young people, what would that be? I think everyone is in a hurry. Okay, well. <laughs> millennials are all in a hurry and millennials are very entitled. Ooh. Very entitled. They just, I don't know why, <laughs> they just seem to think that, oh, and I think sometimes in my case because I look young, people look and say, oh, you know, uh, she has, mm. I can do that, it's not, no, you're seeing the tip of my iceberg. There's a lot underneath, mm -hmm. there's a lot of work That's that went into in. it. Yes. Keep your head down and stay focused. Keep your eye on what you want to achieve long term, but don't be too much in a hurry. Hmm. Don't be too much in a hurry. I think we can wrap up with that. <laughs> I think so. It's a good note <laughs> it's to end on. Note. It's a very Thank good note. Thank you so much, Tosi. Ah, today has been a really, really amazing It's been day. an amazing Absolutely. show. But we have to bring you back. All of them, we'll bring them back. <laughs> because we, um, the truth is, um, we have a lot of problem in Nigeria. And every time I hear building collapse, I, I, still, don't, I still don't get it. Why is this still happening? You know, is it that they don't contact people like you or people like Femi, our earlier guests? They don't contact you guys. They're not contacting us, so <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right, so remember you can watch a repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. And um, as I said earlier, it's really been a great conversation today. Yeah, so keep, please keep all the conversations on all our social media um, platforms. Let's continue to hear what you're saying. In case you missed today's quote, here it is. To create, one must first question everything. Is that true, Tosin? Very true, very true. So you question everything. You must question everything. Mm. OK. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you so much again for joining us. All right, so enjoy the rest of your evening.